next speaker for the evening is Sri Sumit Tapu. Sri Sumit Tapu hails from the Fiji Islands and is a third generation devotee of Bhagwan. His family has been devoted to Bhagwan since the 1960s. Sumit is a professional singer based in Mumbai and has performed at over 500 concerts worldwide and released over 25 albums. In September this year, he was awarded the Sanskriti Award by the Government of India for his work in spreading Indian culture and music to the entire world. In addition, Sumit has dedicated his life to loving and serving Swami and his divine command. He has been inspiring devotees through his music and talks since 1999. Given his ability to organize large-scale events and efficient man management, he was given the task of coordinating the 85th birthday celebrations. He is the male international youth coordinator and with his family spearheads Swami's mission in the Fiji Islands. Sri Sumit Tapu. With love, humility, and reverence, I offer myself at the divine lotus feet of Parabrahma Swarupa, Shiva Shakti Swarupa, Satya Narayan Swarupa, Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba. Respected elders, revered guests, delegates, students, youth of the world, loving Sairam to all of you. I also offer my pranams to my parents who are seated today in the auditorium. There are seven billion people on this earth. Many of them waiting for their Messiah to arrive. Many of them waiting for their chosen God form to take birth. And here we are, seated in this auditorium in the Divine Presence. How blessed we are. How fortunate we are that we have been, all of us, handpicked by Swami Himself. Let us not waste this opportunity, dear devotees. And let us do all that we can to make Him happy. Many people think that Swami made this decision to carry out his mission in this form a few years back. No, no, no. This has all been a part of his divine plan for thousands of years. This is a part of his mission. This is not something which is just conjured up after Maha Samadhi. This, dear devotees, was part of his script. As I bowed down to Swami, Swami said, share your experiences about Muddan Hali. Seventeen and a half years ago, dear devotees, I had a dream in 1999. In this dream, I was inside his interview room in Prashanti Nilam and the word spoken by Bhagavan was this. He said, the last years of my mission I will carry out from a different ashram. From this ashram I will usher in the golden age. And just like a movie script, 
Swami held my hand and we flew a few thousand feet above earth like Superman flew across to an area completely built up and Swami said to me this is where I will be in the final years of my mission then he proceeded to show me each and every part of this ashram first he showed me a building with a large clock tower he said this will be my residence then he came to an auditorium with a dome shape small dome on the outside this is where I'll give darshan he proceeded to show me the entire ashram he said this is approximately a hundred kilometers from Puttaparthi dear devotees when I came here last year I realized last year 16 and a half years back Swami showed me Muddan Hali this is not a coincidence and what you see if I may say Swami what you see today is only 50% of what this ashram will be at its full grandeur I've had the privilege of seeing what else is about to come this ashram will expand and become a centerpiece for the whole world an ashram where Premasai will come as well in 2005 dear devotees Swami announced to the world in Prashantanilayam I will be traveling around the world very soon I was super excited in my absolute innocence I wrote a, a short note to Swami in April or May of 2005 I was seated on the veranda Swami came I showed him a note on that note was written Swami you have just announced you're going on a world tour please come to Fiji Islands Swami in a very beautiful way took the letter gave a beautiful smile and said oh I will come oh yes I will come this was in 2005 a few days later I had a dream in the dream he said you came a few days back you asked me about Fiji Islands and the entire scene changed where we were at Bangalore Airport Swami accompanied by this is in a dream in 2005 by the way Swami was accompanied by a group of dignitaries one of them was Sri Nasir Murthy, Sri C. Srinivas, Mr. Isaac Tigret, and four other young adults, three of whom I did not recognize in 2005. The dream was something which spanned over many hours, where we took off on an aircraft from Bangalore Airport, arrived in Singapore where there was a satsang after the satsang we took off on the aircraft again arrived in Australia in Queensland where there was a satsang and after that satsang we took off again in the aircraft towards Fiji Islands however as soon as the plane took off the dream ended so in my mind I thought maybe this is how Swami is going to come to Fiji he's already come of course he's, he's everywhere but I thought this was it 
last year my family and i prayed to swami swami please come to fiji i had forgotten about the the dream in 2000 and 2005 in june of last year swami in the united states told me i have answered the prayers of your parents and tell them i am coming to fiji do you remember do you remember the dream that was a dream 11 years ago this is now reality so swami swami came to fiji and just as i had seen in my dream in 2005 swami is accompanied by shri nasir murthy shri c srinivas mr isaac tigret brother kumar and the three other young adults who i did not know then but i'd seen 11 years ago was brother madhusudan brother manjekar and sister bhavana this all happened in 2005 in a dream and in reality last year when swami arrived in fiji he gave our family much love much ananda and then went straight to business he said there are many children in fiji who require heart surgeries we must help these children dear devotees i had no idea what swami is talking about i'm not a doctor i'm not from medical profession my wife is but we did not know what the lord knew and throughout the four day trip swami kept saying we must help these children there are there are many pediatric cardiac problems in fiji we must help these children after swami's departure dear devotees when we met the prime minister the, the minister of health she said there are 200 children in fiji born every year with congenital heart disease and then she stopped i said well what happens to these children she said many of them die because there are no services available to treat these children i had tears in my eyes dear devotees because i realized what swami was talking about and swami out of his infinite grace his infinite compassion he sent his team from the raipur hospital his team of brilliant doctors they operated and they gave a gift of life to 25 children absolutely free of charge <laughs> saving families 1.3 million dollars this is swami's love and these surgeries will continue when he was in fiji as well swami said a foundation needs to be formed where swami's work needs to carry out so we proceeded my father and the trustees and the committee proceeded towards registering the foundation what takes 3 to 6 months was registered in 3 weeks and inaugurated by the acting prime minister of fiji honorable ayah sayed kayum swami named the foundation sai prema foundation and all of swami's works happened through this foundation in fiji when swami came to fiji last year as well he said there are many people in the rural villages of fiji who do not have access to health care quality health care we must help them Swami this year has given the rural villages of Fiji a gift a mobile hospital which will access go to these villages provide free health care as well as human value education to all those in these villages then Swami said there was a satsang in Pacific Harbor which is a 1 hour drive from from the main city We actually never 
um, knew why Swami had organized this, the satsang in such a far off location. But we proceeded to organize it. And it was my plan in my mind. This is next to a beach. So I said, I will take Swami when Swami comes off the vehicle to the car, to the beach, from the car to the beach. However, we could not do that. It was raining. Swami proceeded straight inside the makeshift tent. And after the satsang, I had the opportunity to drive Swami back to the residence. I said, Swami, I'm so sorry that I could not take you to the beach and ocean. And Swami said to me, why do you want to show me my creation? <laughs> I have not come here to see what I have created. But I have come here to this place to bless this land, to make it sacred. Because there will be an ashram, a center for love and peace, which will be here in this Pacific Hava region. That is why I have come. As we proceeded from that area towards city, in the dark night of the hour, Swami asked for the vehicle to be slowed down and he said, the land is here. I have selected this long back. We will do Bhumi Puja. This is in 2015. We'll do Bhumi Puja on this land in a year, year's time. And exactly one year later, in September of this year, Swami came, did the Bhumi Puja for the ashram land. If I start to explain about how the ashram land was found, I might take too long, Swami. But the Bhumi Puja was done by Swami and the construction phase of the ashram, which Swami titled Sai Prema Ashram, will begin in 2017. Swami also talked about feeding families and children who do not have access to food on a daily basis. So Swami began the Sai Annapurna project in Fiji as well, early this year. And today, dear devotees, Swami has asked me to make an announcement that on the occasion of his 95th birthday, he will inaugurate the Sri Satya Sai Sanjivani Hospital in Fiji Islands. This will be a pediatric cardiac hospital treating the children of Fiji absolutely free of charge. This is only possible by God. Youth who are here today, students, so many discourse two days back talked about faith. We all have faith, but we have fear as well. Let us become his ideals. Let us become his ideal devotees where we have perfect faith and no fear. He has given us such incredible examples in front of us. Look at the faith minus fear that Brother Madhu has. Look at the faith that our dear uncle Nasir Murthy has. Spreading the education mission of Swami without any fear whatsoever. Going on Swami's command, opening school and university, school after school, campus after campus all over Karnataka. And I've been told over India as well. Look at the faith of Uncle Sri Srinivas. The faith these people have is incredible. Absolutely no fear. These are inspirational figures for us which we look up to and must emulate. I am, I'm also always inspired by the devotees of Singapore who are on the command and call of Swami are able to drop everything and do everything for Swami. And this is how we must become. Dear youth, there will be challenges. Swami will ask us to do many things out of our comfort zone. 
And when he asks us, Bangaru, would he do this for me? Don't say, yes, Swami, but there are challenges. No, no. The time now is for us to say, yes, we will. If Swami asks us, Bangaru, will you do this project? Will you serve my children in your country? Say, yes, we will. What are we going to say? That's not loud enough, dear devotees. What are we going to say to Swami? Yes. The time has come, dear devotees. We are so fortunate, so blessed to be in His divine presence, guided, directed by Him. It is time to make Him happy every single moment of our lives. And Swami, I pray to you, give us more bhakti so we can love you more. Give us more shakti so we can serve you more, Swami. And dear devotees, if we dedicate ourselves to loving Him and serving Him, He will take us across. He will take us across the ocean of samsara to the shores of Vaikuntha, where we will rest in the lap of divinity for eternity. Let us become His ideals. Jai Sai Ram.